In the beginning, there was nothing, and then there was something, and then some stuff happened, depending on what you believe. But one thing that all of mankind can agree on is the god among men himself, born in molten cheese, developed by mystic steamy beings, and molded in orange soda, the one-man cheeseburger apocalypse. This week, we take a look at the epitome of human perfection and peak performance. This episode, we cover our master and ruler, Coach. You guys voted for Rochelle, but we cannot keep the best survivor waiting any longer. And he's also the icon of my YouTube channel. We're covering the cheeseburger loving, encouraging piece of perfection, makeshift leader himself, survivor profile. My friends call me coach. I'm gonna be a one man cheeseburger apocalypse. <laughs> Before we get more into this, I have to throw this out there. The Adpocalypse hit my channel hard and demonetized a lot of my videos, saying they're not advertiser friendly. So I'll be producing as much as I can, but they won't be as frequent, and I'll be dialing back my language to try and meet these new standards. To keep me floating, please donate to my Patreon, buy some shirts and merch, and watch my weekend streams. With that said, let's get to the coaching. Life before the green flu outbreak for this humble southern man was pretty much like Napoleon Dynamite's Uncle Rico. Man, I wish I could go back in time. I take state. Although Uncle Rico just didn't quite cut it, Coach suffered a knee injury that ended his football career abruptly. Let's take a look at the Left 4 Dead official website's bio on Coach. He's 44 years old and hails from Savannah, Georgia. Coach has a big heart and a healthy appetite and a wicked swing with a chainsaw. After a knee injury ended his career as a defensive lineman in college, Coach salvaged his physical education degree, barely, and landed a job teaching health at the local high school in his hometown of Savannah. Working as a defensive coordinator for the freshman tour team, my not have been the best path to a pro coaching career, but it's come pretty in handy in guiding a group of survivors to safety. Coach has watched his beloved hometown get ravaged by infected. Now it's time to deliver his own brand of Southern hospitality. A sense of reason, humor, and leadership, Coach serves as the integral leader of his group of survivors. Being the oldest among the four with pretty much the only experience in leadership, you can pretty much look at Coach as the fat 50-year-old dad with a kiss-the-cook apron and socks and sandals talking about the past, eating till his arteries clog, and giving advice in a nice but also fatherly way. He tries to keep an optimistic attitude in most situations, and as the leader of the group, he has a very commanding nature. If you're hurt, injured, or incapacitated on the ground, Coach will give you loud, demanding words of encouragement to not give up. Pretty much what you'd expect from a guy named Coach. On that note, we all don't know his real name. Not even Valve and Gabe Newell know, since they have written him as just Coach in the coding of the game. Rochelle makes fun of this tidbit when she finds Coach's dead body and sometimes will say, do you think Coach was his first or last name? In any given situation, Coach will display some level of respect to anyone, including the infected. If they have brought Coach down to red level health, Coach will mutter the words, they beat my ass fair and square. His respect for his fellow Fellow survivors, I will cover later in this video. Coach's leadership skills and knowledge of the Georgia area proves to come quite in handy as him and Ellis guide the group through the greater part of Savannah and inform the others of his time at Whispering Ropes and what can be accomplished there. Coach also utilizes his knowledge of the Midnight Riders live shows and at their canceled concert, Coach suggests the use of the stage pyrotechnic show in order to gain the nearby helicopter's attention. Coach also uses his years of fine dining experience to his advantage. When they arrive in the sugary abyss of hard rain and and leave the gun bag with flares on the talking boat, Coach will bring up the burger tank's brightness and ability to cut through fog to get Virgil's attention. Coach's appetite is one of his most famous and endearing qualities. Coach will always declare a love for food whenever given the chance and expresses his disgust of when a nearby food court or restaurant is shut down for evident reasons. One of my favorite lines in the game is Coach rambling on about when he would order if a full food court was still up and operational. Barbecue, Coach, bacon, burger, no. large order of fries, no. orange soda with no, no ice and a piece of hot apple pie. Hopefully, he and the other survivors got away in the helicopter at the end of the parish and he got himself a steak dinner. Yeah, I will deep fry you an entire goddamn cow. Hell yeah! Being the leader of his merry band of misfits, Coach surely demands a little respect from his crew, and in turn, we should see how his relationship with each person plays out. Pretty much a neighbor to Coach, Ellis knows the ins and outs of Savannah, since it's both of their hometowns. They both share common interest in music, stock car racers, and amusement parks. These interests are opened up with Coach and Ellis, who will voice their love for the Midnight Riders if you have them speak in front of the mic of the Midnight Riders concert. Every lady's crazy. Crazy when a dad is not around. Da na 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 na. Gotta reach for the top. Stay on the mountain. 
and Coach will even proclaim that he has all their albums, even the ones that ain't no good. They both speak of Jimmy Gibbs Jr. as a legend, a god, and even potential life mate. And don't get them started on the Whispering Oaks, who Ellis and Coach both are ecstatic to visit. I think Coach was more for the food and Ellis for Kitty Land, though. Despite Ellis taking everything in a naive, childish way, Coach tends to be heavily patient with his tendencies. This most likely due to the fact that he was having to deal with teenage boys with even more childishness as a high school football coach. This experience drives Coach to steer Ellis in the right direction and keep him focused on the objective at hand. Man, she is beautiful. Ellis, keep your mind on the cans, not the girl. Tell me she don't look good with that gun. Keep your mind on the cans, not the girl. Something everyone in the group would agree with, Coach on, except for one guy. Now whenever I bring up Nick, it's always something negative. Nick will always be the one to say Coach's ideas just won't work, but at the same time, offers nothing productive to say in the manner of better suggestions. Whenever Coach has an idea, Nick will pretty much say, or we can all just die miserably. Besides downing any idea Coach has to offer, Nick looks to Coach as the leader of the group and will feel the pressure of taking on the leadership if Coach passes away. As time passes, Nick's pessimism dwindles but still remains, causing Coach to snap from time to time. Nick will also make fun of Coach's weight for his overeating and, you know what, he's not fat, he's fluffy. Coach and Michelle have a pretty simplistic and caring relationship. They talk to each other with equal respect. Coach will also refer to her as a little sister, showing how protective over her he is, much like a brick brother would be. Coach is the only survivor in the second group of survivors to not have much serious interactions with the original group. Coach will only be offended at the idea of being referred to as Rochelle's father by Francis, and he's also seemed skeptical of Francis's good nature. I had to hyphenate that one. Coach and Zoe have no interaction, and Coach will just tease Ellis over his crush on Zoe. Coach's optimism is matched only by Lewis, and this is shown when Coach offers to bring Zoe, Francis, and Lewis along with them on their travel to New Orleans. Wanna come with us? Hell, we can even leave Ellis behind to make room for y'all. Hey, what? <laughs> nah, good luck with that. Coach's relationships span far and wide, touching each and every one of our lives in some way. Except for Firefox, she calls him Fat Coach. We don't need that kind of negativity in our lives. And some of you may be saying to yourself, Zach ass is just memeing. No, no I'm not. But speaking of memes, Coach did start the first Left 4 Dead 2 meme. Soon after the launch of the Sami Survival Guide trailer, everyone remembers the scene of Coach and Nick hauling up the dead center stairs and Nick gasping Maybe the helicopter. Maybe it's made of chocolate. <laughs> This meme rung for a long time and slowly faded away. But did you know the bar of chocolate Coach is eating at the beginning of the trailer is actually called Chocolate Helicopters? Inception much? Football! <laughs> yeah. Now earlier I said Coach didn't have much going on with the original survivors. Maybe he and Bill would have hit it off though. They have a lot in common if you think about it. They both front their groups as the elder with experience and leadership. They both were doing relatively well in their respective fills until a knee injury sent them home and changed their life direction. And when it comes to physical fitness, they both come with disadvantages. Coach being fluffy and Bill being old. And they both have to deal with someone who talks a lot of fuss the whole time. <coughs> Nick and Francis. Speaking of Francis, we always look at him as the guy with the only tattoos besides Ellis, but Coach says he actually has a few tucked away under his clothing. Now I've brought this up before, but that voice actor for Coach also has had plenty of experience fighting the living dead. Actor Chad L. Coleman started a few seasons of The Walking Dead as Tyrese, the only good character in the series. But spoilers, I'm gonna give you 10 seconds and I'll let you know where to skip so you know any, um, you can avoid some spoilers. Okay, go on, go. Don't complain at me if you see this. Okay, are they gone? Well, the way Tyrese died was utter trash. Getting bitten by a random kid and dying after an amputation pathetically? Man, screw that. 
Well, that about covers the bases for my favorite survivor. Did I not cover something about Coach that you feel like should be mentioned? Let me know in the comments. Keep me going with a like, a comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe and hit the bell by the subscribe button. We only have two survivors left, Lewis and Rochelle. Who's it gonna be? It's all up to you and your votes. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out my second channel, Wow Such Gaming Streams, and see all previous streams of anything I broadcasted with my friends. And if you're able to, donate to my Patreon or snag you some merch. I really need the help since the demonetization's hitting me hard. Also, shout out to Super Saiyan Adam, or SSJ Adam, I know what the reference is, for his numerous donations. If you donate to me during the stream, I'm definitely giving you a shout out from now on. Until next time, I'm Zach S with Wow Such Gaming. Stay wow! Oh, fuck.